good morning. Oh, wow. Welcome to the BTP, the Boy Town Podcast. You've got in one corner Papa Bear Extraordinaire himself, the guy with the human head. Okay, he's looking younger. Oh. We're going to get into that. We're going to talk about it. He's also wearing an Alessia t-shirt that he insists on referring to as Elise. And that is very, very weird. In the other corner, you've got the NBC, the money toad, looking fresh, even though he needs to get to a barber's because he's got a major wave going on. Mm. He still feels good and looks good. And it's good to be here in the pod. And baby boy, how the fuck are you doing? I am good. I just want to call you out for being a thief. Why have you stolen your daddy's fleece? Why have you stolen a 70-year-old man's fleece? And why are you wearing it on the sexiest podcast in the country? What's going on, my friend? Dude, I wear fleeces because I'm an outdoor guy who's going to be a father. I kind of am always either climbing up mountains or taking care of my kid, even though I don't have a kid. Yeah, what's weird is, as you say, you don't have a kid. And also, when you climb mountains, never once have I seen you wearing a fleece. You tend to be in photos you post on social media, uh naked more often than not, or in shorts and no shirt. Just And you're you're always up there with loads of guys, so fair play to you. Yeah, well, that's why me and the other guys call call ourselves naturists. Right, okay. We like to get out there and be naturists. And mm. I am uh, pretty big in the naturist scene in Northern Ireland. And if there's anything you want to know about that scene, now's the time to ask. I mean, yeah, like, is it one of those things, like, when you're, you say you're big on the naturist scene, um, yeah. would you say, like, whenever you, you become a, a nature boy, we'll say when you become a nature boy, do you leave your house? in nature or do you wait till you get to like i don't know the bottom of the mountain and then get nature or do you like what what's the process when do you go from being a fleece guy to the nature boy that's what i want to know the only thing i wear when i'm leaving the house is a smile and a beanie right a, a smile and a what a beanie hat well i thought you said a peony, and i was gonna say what's a peony? <laughs> a peony could be a very strange garment and i was keen to hear what that was yeah, I'm actually too hot in this place, so we'll take it off. But yeah, like I would, if, whenever I go to the naturist meetups, you just mm. drive sans, you drive sans gear, like. Right. Okay. And what about clothes? Yeah. Same. No. <laughs> no clothes. Just a just a just a thimble full of poppers and a ham sandwich. Because what I find kind of weird um, about like yeah, sure about getting naked is is when you look at somebody when you're getting naked. Do you ever do that? Do you ever like, especially like obviously I know if, what you mean. if you're with your with your wife or whatever, you can never. Like take your clothes off, sexy, because you you always have to step out of your pants, and that's never sexy. The only way to take your pants off in a sexy way is if you have pre-made Velcro pants and you're a stripper and you can whip them off. But in real life, you have to. There's nothing more emasculating as a man than just just stepping out of your pants and just kicking them away. So when you and the boys are at the bottom of like sleeve Sleeped Daniel on. or whatever, yeah, and then you nature eyes up and just like kind of like some sort of weird. Power Rangers, naturizers, and then you just take your gear off. Are you looking like in your mate's eyes, kind of like being, let me just get my panties off here? Uh, no, I'm not looking at his eyes. I'm do, looking do still, at his bottom. Do you still call what? your boxers? Do you still call your boxers panties, by the way? Because I do. Like when I'm taking off my panties, I don't take off my boxers, I take off my panties. No, don't be stupid. I call them pantaloons. Oh, pantalons. Okay, en français. Mm. Uh, oui, oui, literally. Uh, better change them. Oh, well. So, yeah, so right, you but, and the guys, you're at the butt of the hill. You are about to get naked. I want you to talk me through what you do when you take your clothes off. Do you pack them away again? Do they go back in the car? Do they go in your rucksack? Talk me through. You're at the bottom of the hill. You've got your, your clothes on. How do you get naked? Talk. Sometimes you're the designated packer. So what Sorry, do you have to do? <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, this trip's getting Can pretty crazy. respect? Oh. No, you give us a bit of respect. Take it seriously. Okay, sorry. Um, because we get a lot of people fucking laughing at us and saying things like, oh, freaks, weird, you know, small dick, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, but we, so someone will be the designated clothes packer. So that means mm. they don't get to be an interest and they just have to go around really with a big uh, storage container and you fire your yeah. stuff into that and they join you on the walk, but they are kind of just minding the clothes. No, I've, I've so many questions really about this that yeah, I feel like me too. I, I, I want you answers. to answer. Like, for example, obviously, the, that lifestyle you lead, that, that naturist lifestyle, that's obviously, yeah. um, by law, it's illegal. You know, it's, it, you, should, you can't be naked. So is there, say, five guys are going, are going out walking as nature boys, the one of the guys, the designated packer, does he remain in clothes if, per se, like the cops arrive and then the nature boys just like hide behind rocks and just, 
and like he's like, oh, I'm just here going for a walk, and then they're like, what's in your in your rucksack? And he's like. Why is there just a load of other guys clothes in, in this? Are you killing people? But he's like, nah, I'm just, I, I like to pack in case it gets cold up here, change of clothes, things like that. Or what's um, so, Right, so you're behind a rock, you're peering out, say me, <laughs> I'm the packer, right? You're peering out behind the, the, the rock. Again, if someone's behind you, they can see you crouched down, probably see your balls hanging down to your legs, weird. But yeah, yeah, you're yeah. peeking over, what's your feeling? Are you excited to get to the top of the mountain? Are you afraid? Are you nervous that the police might try to and the naturing experience or what well look i'm always looking at you i mean you know they didn't give me the, na- the nickname pikachu for nothing but <laughs> 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 gotta catch them all but um yeah that adds the i mean that's kind of why i got into it that adds the excitement to being a naturist is mm-hmm. the fact that at any time we could kind of like get caught and at the end of the day the worst you're going to get is the slap on the dick Right, okay. That's what the police will do if they catch you. I also want to to say to you, you know, when you speak about being excited, is that like an excitement now how you would just be giddy, butterflies in your tummy? Or would it be like how when former Arsenal player Patrick Vieira described playing for Arsenal? I don't know whether this was a difficulty he had in, in just learning English at the start, but he when he used it in one of his first interviews, he said it was sexually exciting playing football for Arsenal, which <laughs> meant I think he was running around in an aroused state. Do you get that level of excitement or is it just, are you soft, but, you know, hoo hoo, or are you like, oh, like what's, is it hoo hoo or is it ho oh, ho? <laughs> it's somewhere in between it's like oh you know oh, yeah. <laughs> just a little up at the end so you, uh, well so literally you're, so you're there you've got your wee hat on naked apart from boots and a hat you've got a wee yeah. semi McElroy on you're you're <laughs> you're excited so it's not like it's not vulgar but it's not flop it's kind of like just there's a wee bit of a, a bounce to it up the hill I, I, i'd like to see that it's mischievous so do you remember like years and years ago like you and I definitely went through a phase on Snapchat where you would say what we would describe each other as funny photos to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. the, the, those, those good old days, yeah. I mean, what's weird is that now that would be called uh, gay, um, very gay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, well, but in those days, fun. In those, in those days, you and I, I me and a couple of my male friends did have like a little bit of a Snapchat back and forth. We had a streak uh-huh. back and forth. Yeah. Because you would you would look for ways to get that in the photo where that wasn't uh-huh. the main bit of the photo, right? And yeah, I mean, for some of us, it's easier than others. Let's just say, yeah, you know? yeah. You you had that ultra zoom lens, but yeah. um <laughs> But I, uh, basically, I was in coming out of the shower a couple of days ago, and I thought it was really funny because I just had my phone on shuffle, and Tom Jones, it's not unusual, came on, mm-hmm. and I was like. If I sent you a video of uh-huh. me doing the Carlton dance, but fully naked, <laughs> you know, side to side yeah. and up and down, would you appreciate it? And then, like, I don't even have Snapchat anymore, so I would have to send it on WhatsApp. And I mean, yeah. I don't know how quickly you would delete it. I think you would keep that over me. Yeah, I mean, definitely would be like, oh no, is this Shane Todd in this video and put it on Instagram? And then clearly it would be you and because you thought of other tattoo in the back of your leg, would give it away. Um, but yeah, I'm I remember my boss. Remember whenever we were on holidays together, you made me make a video of you to send to your wife if you do it at dance while you're putting uh, sun cream on? Yep. And then once I had the senator, you're like, I need to take your phone. And you took my phone and deleted the video off it. It was, I just want to let people know you were wearing, uh, you were actually overdressed from your favorite attire. You were wearing some some underpants, some panties. But um, it was it was a... An interesting dance, let's say. I think it was it was seductive and flexible. I think we, we would describe it as. Yeah, with three axes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm. I just I just like that. I like to have a good time. You know, guilty guilty as charged. But yeah, I basically because of social distancing and COVID, we have. I mean, fuck it. I'm taking my clothes off right now. Oh no. Uh, also, I hate whenever I have headphones on because my ears stick to my head. Yeah, I mean, like look at my ears, right? Look at, yeah. look at, I'll keep this here in, uh-huh. and then right. Oh, no, don't do that. It was a very do you loud noise. Difference in my ears. Um, look. no, I think, I mean, don't, yeah, don't, that's don't, don't book them out because I know, I know your parents wanted you to have surgery when you were a boy to get those ears fixed, but I don't think you, you really need to. I mean, can I just say what's going Sorry, on? Sorry, brother. So, what's going on with that hair? Um, what do you mean? I just go, keep it like no, no, on, on your on your head. 
Like you look like a poster boy of Hitler Youth. Like you've got the Aryan look. You've got the. I mean, what would definitely we call it the Führer flop? It's just you know the you know you're, so, you're the Führer flop. Honey. It's like you know I I love it. Honey, let me tell you something. Forget Aryan because I'm not caring about what oh. you're saying about this. Oh wow! I like it. I think it's a strong look. I can do like a ponytail. No, it's no, it's wild and I it's mean, rugged and. The no, hairdressers no. have been trying to get me in. Our personal mm. stylist, Mikey, has been been yeah. like throwing out the lasso, trying to catch me. Mm. But you know, this. I mean, I put it on Instagram. I said, "Guys, should I cut my hair? Let it grow." And everybody no. was like, "Let it grow." And yeah, they might have been mugging me off, but at the same yeah. time, people want to see it long. And that's I mean, would would you undercut it and just keep the flop getting bigger? Would you want a bigger floppy, or do you want to just you know? I want get three and a half inch floppy again. for sure. Right, three okay. and a half inch floppy. You know what? There's this guy I used to go to school with who's a year above me in school. And you know why sometimes I think it's been highlighted by Jay and the in-betweeners that you, there's always a guy in your school that talks shit? There was this yes. guy and, it, and it is, his nickname was D. His actual name was David, but he, he went by D, so I'll not say his full name because it'll give him away. But mm. he, used to, he was a year above us and we were on the rugby tour together and he told us a story about his friend. And he's like, oh, I have this mate who, and again, it's the first time I've ever heard this phrase used. He's like, oh, I've got this mate and he's got a nine-inch floppy, right? And I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> so it's like, for anyone who doesn't know what a nine-inch floppy is, it's, it's a, definitely a large length penis. And he used to say that he would do all these things with this nine-inch floppy for banter. But like, the stuff he would say wouldn't add up. So he'd be like, oh, we'd be driving along in the car and then... We'll just call this guy, the, the guy's story about D, we'll call this character Dean, all right? So Dean, he'd be like, oh, we'd be driving along and Dean's in the back seat and he'd wind his window down and he would like throw his nine inch floppy out and like hit the car, uh, driving along beside them. And I'd be like, that's still not the way a nine inch floppy works. It's like, you know, one of those, like, do you ever remember you get like a little lizard when you were young that you would throw them to the yeah, wall yeah. and stick and then yeah. the wee balls in the hands? But it's like it, a, a floppy doesn't stretch. It, if it's a nine inch floppy, it, it's only going nine inches. So, I mean, he was getting on like, oh, I just fuck it across and it would do and hit people. And it was just a very strange thing. And because you're in school and he's a, like an older guy, it'd be like, ha ha, cool story without probably going, hold on a second. What are you trying? Like, cars are probably, I'm talking about maybe a meter, two meters away from each other. There's social distancing on the roads, and you have a guy who can just lasso you. An NIF <laughs> at the car next door. Also, and we talked about this before, whenever that was definitely like a secondary school type thing where guys would be like, sure, my dick's this size, and then mm-hmm. they'll give you a precise measurement. And as we've learned, being like older gentlemen now, mm-hmm. hey man, we've been alive between us for about 70 years. Yeah, that's actually quite, dick, quite accurate. Your dick is not the same size two days of your life ever. No, I mean, it definitely fluctuates like. Yeah, um, uh, that's definitely true. But mine's consistently small. I think that's something we could definitely, <laughs> definitely say. But like, whenever you're in school, like guys who obviously were at different <laughs> stages of their their like development and stuff would say different things. Like I remember there's one guy who was talking about um what it was like to ejaculate. He's like, oh, I do it and all. And then people are like, what's it like? And he goes, oh, it's really white and all. It's kind of like you know shaving foam. <laughs> we were like. Oh, cla- class and all. Well, like, he's not putting them in his face. Yeah, I mean, but this is what the guy says. Oh, it's really white, like shaving foam. And then, like, we all were like, oh, no, what's going to happen here? Like, this is shit. Like, shaving foam's going to fly out the end of it and stuff. It's going to be really weird. So it was like, then, and obviously we didn't know at that stage what it, what it was like or what, why it happened. So it was like, we were just like, again, weird thing to just be chatting about. Because, like, nowadays we were just chatting about that to our mates. Like, oh, you don't know what comes out the end of it. And they'll be like, ah, oh, don't, don't. Are we doing that? But in school, you're like, oh, yeah, mate, tell us about it. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, when you got a wee bit older, you need, there was always a guy who would act like, who would say, what about this thing that happens? And then no one would relate to it. And then he would start to get paranoid and yeah. try and wrap up the conversation to go and check it. You know, you'd have a guy yeah. who'd be like, what about after and all, whenever you, you know, you ejaculate and then like, you know, that wee bit of blood and all. And flip, like, why is that even a thing? And everyone would yeah. No, that's that's never happened. He's like, yeah, fucking, you turn on here. You know, there's yeah. always a guy trying to wrap up the conversation. And you're like, no, nah, it's the sixth period. Like we've got another hour of RA to go before we even get to go between another class. Like he's like, ah, and, and you know, whenever your mates just gets uncomfortable and you just start turning red, and they're like, yeah, and he's like, and he's like, I know I'm teaching you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I mean, no, it was always always classic. Like, it's funny how when you were a kid, you just like would just take things as being the way it is. You know what I mean? You wouldn't like. Like I remember well, having. Whole... Sorry, when... I was just gonna say that's what my entire new stand-up show is about. Yeah. Whenever I finally get to do it, somebody told me it's just about mm-hmm. things that you hear whenever you're younger that you fully take as science fact because they've been told to you by somebody yeah. who's a year older than you. And yeah, like, I he would know. I heard a fact that, like, you know, woodlice, apparently they can fly. But, I mean, there's no basis to that. That was just something when I heard at school. I was like, all right, okay, that's true. And then I, I think I brought it up recently as in, like, you know, a science fact. I know and people are like, now nah, you're fucking mental. with don't have wings. I was like, ah, no, just fuck that. A big but, one was, uh, and this, it's, it, this, this isn't like a urban myth, but there was that one of, like, uh, I, you know, misheard phrases, which people talk about all the time. Yeah. I always thought it was up until like genuinely like last year play it play it by year because that makes yeah. so much more sense to me yeah because we were actually i think year. it might have been on a podcast that you said that I, what did you, you corrected say me and you, and went, you, play it you also year. corrected me on lonely child you yeah no, me on lonely child and he's like oh it's a lonely child and i was like what it's only like, i did a whole stand-up show about it yeah but i mean you've got money out of it who's laughing now you know ribbit but yeah, yeah but it. But yeah, school was just, it, it was classic for that sort of thing. And, you know, nowadays, I just i just can't imagine. Imagine going to school with your your mind that you have now. Do you know what I mean? Just be like, how much you'd be like, fuck this shit. <laughs> be, you know, like, you'd be like Goodwill hunting on the, on yeah. the, on the board. <laughs> Although you think that, you'd probably just be ass thick. <laughs> yeah. But imagine going in being like, saying, like, I think all these kids are talking about, oh, it's like shaving foam and all. And you'd be like, nah, I mean, it's even, you get, get a bit older and they'd be like oh it'd be like gets really small turns gray and no one ever touches it again they'd be like oh no i'd be like like you know what happened in pompeii where it was like the big volcano and it just everything went to ash that's kind of like what happens here really it's turns gray and dormant effectively um speaking of um speaking of willies mm. um whenever i was younger nobody was joking what about whenever mm. at school you just do you remember that feeling you had of like when something's funny now, right, you obviously laugh and like, yeah, we, we, can, we can pretend to slag each other off, but there is nothing funnier than when we were like maybe backstage at a stand up yeah. show, joking about with the, the other comedians that were on that night. And you're properly, like, most of the time you're just taking the piss out of yourself and each other. Mm-hmm. And you're properly doing that like belly laugh, like anytime yeah. like we do the limelight shows. Mm-hmm. What about at school? whenever you didn't really understand that laughter. Yeah. So it became way more uncontrollable. And yeah. somebody would say something in school, but there was that element of like, we're not allowed to laugh in class. Yeah. So it made everything way funnier. Yeah. Do you remember physically being oh, sore laughing in school? There was one particular moment that stands out. We we had like an assembly and upstairs of the, the canteen for, I think we must have been like fifth year or something. And I'm with hindsight now as an adult, our... Uh, year head or no it was, it was actually like an assistant principal read a reading from the bible with the sole intention of trying to make boys laugh like i remember some of the lines it was just all about jesus saying things like and the lord said bring me the boys and i will come on to them you know stuff like this and we we're all going <laughs> you know and i remember we started sniggering and you know when you, you can't help it you just circle that makes it so much worse, uh, and it you makes can't. It so, much worse. so then the shoulders the shoulders are, go our year had noticed us, right? And and she was just like, oh, oh, stop laughing. And then we were like trying not to. And then when the reading finished and she left, was, our year head was like, you need to stay here when you talk to you about this. And she's like, why are you laughing? And it's so blatantly why we're laughing. And I, you know, and you just can't stop. And I was like, I wasn't laughing. And she just said the light. And she goes, you're laughing now. And, I was like, <laughs> and then everybody was just going, oh, so great. And I just couldn't because stop. Because when it... When a teacher says to you, what's so funny? Mm-hmm. It starts making you remember what you were laughing yeah, at that minute. Yeah. So, so it becomes funnier. And the worst thing is when you just can't look at your mate. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like mm-hmm. when you know that your mate is a fucking idiot like you. Yeah. So you know that when you're all being told off, he's thinking about you trying yeah. not to laugh and you're thinking about him trying uh-huh. not to laugh. And then when the side of your face goes, I was so bad for it. I remember once being away on a school trip and there was like a guy giving us a real serious uh-huh. telling off and he was an older guy yeah and like i i have respect for older people like i if an older person's like telling you off whatever even if you're not going to do what they say i'll still always be like no problem and all yeah this guy unintentionally the way he spoke or something made me laugh so much yeah. that i had to physically 
just get down on the ground and lie <laughs> face down. <laughs> he goes, he, he was in England in like Worcester, and the guy goes, what are you doing? And I said, press ups. And I remember <laughs> just starting to do press ups and him walking away being like, there's obviously something wrong with him. But yeah. that was the time. I also remember being in Scouts and one of the scout leaders who was like in his 50s was talking that we were like breaking off in the groups of like four or something in the scout hall. Mm. And he was like doing like fucking ropes to whatever they do in Scouts. Yeah. And I just remember he was a nice older guy and he farted. He just did a wee yeah. fart and he didn't address it. And he just went, oh. And yeah. moved on. See what he doing? Yeah, I I was gone. I was like, that's the funniest thing ever. Yeah, oh, that's just so like laugh. that school laughing is just. Oh. But it's did... so in fact, I remember the the time I think I've laughed the most in my life was um whenever I was in school and it was in P six in art, oh. and it was me, Chris McBride, Ross McCrory. Andrew Brown and a guy called William Dunwoody as well, uh-huh. and we were we were in art class. I'll tell you a funny story about that uh-huh. group after. We were in art class, and the Manic Street Preachers I think had a song called Kevin Carter. Yes, and Kevin Carter. Yeah. Right, <laughs> and for some reason, I heard that on the radio, probably on the way in on Atlantic Two Five Two, that song. And I and I just made up the word, the rest of the words too. And I yeah. went in our class. I'm just, and I'm not ten, telling everyone yeah. this is going to be funny. I'm like, Kevin Carter, you're on my sexy charter. Right? <laughs> and then I just started adding people to uh-huh. the charter who had the surname Carter. So I would just, yeah. I just rolled with it. You know yeah. that silly fun. I was like, yeah. Vicky Carter, you're on my <laughs> sexy charter. And I added about twenty Carters. And uh-huh. it was one of those ones that like started very funny, stopped yeah. getting funny, and then yeah. got funny again, which yeah. is the best. Oh. Um, so that group of guys I was mates with in P6. You know you know my mate Maka, don't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. One of the, in fact, one of the, the, most, the, the most I've ever laughed in my life was in school. We were in study period, and we had, like, the head, study head would have just sat at the front while we would just be in this, like, assembly hall, busy studying. And it was so quiet, you know, and so quiet. People are working. You can hear the clock. It's just, you can just hear the clock. It's that quiet. And I was so focused on like just my work that Maka was in front of me in a seat. And he just sort of like, again, so casual, just turned around, handed me this note, like without saying anything, just reached. And like, I was expecting it to say something or whatever. And <laughs> obviously, we'd been there probably half an hour studying away. He must be doing this. But when I opened the note, it was just a drawing of an alien with hooks for hands and a very detailed vagina, right? And it no, there was no, like that was making me laugh so hard. There was no reason for him to have given me that. Like my brain was confused, like why has he done this? But it was the look of, he was like this when he looked around, he was like, you know, he was just so like, like as if it was something dead serious. So then I started laughing. And then the study, the study head, she was this English woman, very, very posh and spoke like this. And she was like, Dave, why are you laughing? And I was like, oh, no, it doesn't matter. And you know, you're sure laughing, you're laughing and laughing. And then she's like, Dave, you need to go outside and relieve yourself. And then that just made me laugh even harder. And then I like, just couldn't stop. She's like, Dave, go to the toilets now. And then I had to get up in front of everybody and walk to the front. And for some reason, I don't know to this day why she said this, but as I was just passing her and it just about calmed down, she just goes, oh, and Dave, wash your face. <laughs> I just couldn't make any sense. Why had he drawn that? Why did he give it to me? Why is she telling me to relieve myself? And then why is she want me to wash my face? It's like, so all this didn't make any sense. And then I had to go back in and apologize and stuff. And it was just, uh, you know, when you're not sorry and you have to apologize, you're like, oh. that's the worst. Uh, oh, that's that's, they were, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. Actually, when you were time. saying that, I felt I felt like it was there with you. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, but it was just you know you know why I think to me one of the funniest things could happen are stuff that make no sense. You know stuff that yes. you just, like and I can't fathom why that happened. And for even deny it, like afterwards I was like, why did you do that? And he goes, oh, I was just bored. Like and thought you like art. And I was even at that, I was like, why would that be a thing to show me? Just in the total dead of science, a full like the hook hands oh, and. Oh, so weird. And then another thing similar to that happened, another fella in my class handed me a picture. In fact, no, I had sent him, this is even worse, I had sent him a picture. And again, being, I think, 15, 16, it was just a giant dick, but I'd drawn a speech bubble. 
and wrote written inside a speech bubble, hiya mate, right? So he just opened it up, but the teacher had seen it and he's like, What's that? And at that point I go, on, Fuck. It's like, and I'm looking at my mate, but like, open it. <laughs> and he's like, Open open it there. And he was like, Oh no, I, I can't. And I was like, you know, it's a July, as if I just I, I can't I physically open it. And he's like, No, no, go ahead. Open it. And then he opened it and he was like, All right, show me. And I was just going, no, don't, please don't. And this is a new teacher I hadn't really known before. And he just turned around and he goes, is that, a, is that a penis with a flag in it? And my mate, being a hero, went, yeah. He goes, and it's so weird. He goes, yeah, I just love geography and drawing dicks. <laughs> so they, and I was like, oh, no. So then the teacher was like, right, well, just don't do that in class. Which I thought, oh, thank God, if I'd have been any other teacher, I'd have been probably in a detention having to explain my actions with lines, you know. But, um, so... Yeah, that group I was telling you about in our class. Yeah. We, um, there was like a fallout between me and one of the guys in oh, like no. the playground. What about? I think he said my shoes were dirty. Um, I can't remember. It was some very, very trivial. And anyway, I, Chris, this guy Chris was still like my friend, still like chatting to me during it, even though I fallen out with this group. And I went like so overly dramatic for no reason as a child. Yeah. I went up to him in the playground one day and I went, Chris, you have to pick me or them. And I was like, I'll leave it, I'll leave it with you. And I walked away. And then about two days later, I was like, I'm gonna give him some space to like to think about it. And I know it's gonna be a tough decision. What age were you? Uh, P6. Oh, and why in P6 are you giving guys time to think about decisions? What the fuck are you watching on TV? Like Dawson's I Creek is all I watch. <laughs> It must have been something fairly, uh, fairly dramatic because like two days later, I went up to him and I was like, Christopher, I know you're probably having a tough time deciding, but what, what shall be the fate of your decision? And he's like, oh, I picked him like at the time you said, and I was like, okay. And then I just had to bounce off and then never <laughs> be mates with him, which was really sly. Yeah, heartbreak, But I'm I think sure. I saw him since about 10 years later and we were, you know, I think we're always forgiven. And what's he doing himself now? Like what's he doing with his life or... I've had him murdered. <laughs> I mean, you think no, that's he, fair. I, I'm not sure. I, would you, right, for 100 quid, would you pay for this thing that basically, yes. like, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, listen, it lets you see what everybody you went to school with from, like, primary school to now is up to. Like, so let me, let, let me phrase it better. Would you pay 100 quid to get this, like, direct, Netflix download that only goes to your account uh-huh. and everybody you went to primary school with the secondary school you can like click on them like we episodes and uh-huh. you get to watch like a five minute package on like what their life is up until now would you would you be keen for that I wouldn't I don't know if I pay 100 quid like I wouldn't be that interested you know I would a thousand percent but I mean what I do think is quite funny and I, I was chatting with my mates about it there at the weekend was how whenever we got we moved into our new office um there is a guy who shares a building with us who was in my year at school and he's basically, I think he's doing like some kind of like psychology or something like he's a psychiatrist or something in this building or like a counselor and he's in there doing like serious work and then we're just the floor above him talking about shame foam coming out of Cox. Like it's, it's yeah. that, that, that that's what, what our life has become, you know, serious people. And then we're just these two idiot guys. But David, would you change it for the world? Absolutely. Well, for the, for the world. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm no. just dedicated to this lifestyle, and I love you, and I love this podcast, mm-hmm. and being able to do comedy. I think it's great, and uh, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, I, I mean, mean Chris McBride, you made the wrong choice, baby. You made the wrong choice. Yeah. Oh well. Um. Do you think speaking of this podcast, we had a nice wee meeting for the first time in how long with the snake rap band last night? It was good to see him again. Uh, we had to wait uh, until he, he'd fully shed. Yeah. Um, which I mean, he was still getting with his hands. pretty gross. Have you ever seen the film Deadpool? No, I actually haven't. No, well, basically, you'll not get this reference, but when you look it up, you'll enjoy it. Is Ben looks like uh, Deadpool without the mask on, you know, when he shed his skin, just basically a horrendously burned, gross, cre- like superhero creature. Um, but nah, it was ben good to catch cute. up to, and um, yeah, we he is actually look, he's looking very cute, and so are you. I've got to be honest, that haircut's looking good, and uh, you're too sexy, uh, guys. I no, appreciate that. Uh, you know, you're I'm sitting you, back, and uh, here, here, don't let us keep you up, right? Yeah, no, it's sweet because you know, listen, listen, guys, listeners, watchers, viewers, 
And um, why? What, what are you years. watching? What are you watching? That your screen's all getting all light all the time. Are you watching me something? Something? I'm different? not. I'm not. I'm getting. I'm in between two things that I think we should do is like little features. Okay, but um, just and I had I had one save. Uh-huh. I had one save from last week, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't find the same article, so I'm trying to figure okay, it out. But what we talking about there? Yeah, the podcast generally. We have decided we wanted the. We had a meeting about making Boytown great again. We're making a few changes. I know we've talked about making Boytown great again for a while, but we've decided that the, when it is changing is when we go back to the studio, which will hopefully be within the next month or so, depending on Mr. Daddio over there and other things. But um, You too. Yeah, but uh, we... No, I just mean your child. You know, if you if you have a child, that'll probably delay things. You know, so uh, it's entirely you. But what we're saying is that the people have spoken. We've been looking at uh, videos that have gone out every week. We put our videos out, and again, obviously, we're delighted people continue to listen to the podcast. But um, there's there's comments that are on every week. The same comments. It's people saying one of three things. The first is bring back tweet back. The second is bring back the phone calls and the third is Dave Elliott is a best one amphetamine addict, addict which I mean I yep. don't know where that's coming from but every Medicine week sense. yeah every but yeah. every week people are saying I am some kind of drug addict I mean if it were to transpire indeed that I was a, a best one amphetamine addict would that would that change your opinion on me or would that kind of like you know take a few boxes and make a bit of sense can I be honest mm-hmm. I probably think you're a bit cooler all right, okay. <laughs> sweet, but yeah. So that was it. So we've decided. Listen, I'm not. I'm not giving up them. I'm not giving up the benzos, right? So we are going to bring back a segment. Now we're not going to be bringing back two phone calls and two tweet backs every week because it's just not the time for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a random selection. So it's either what it could be Shane every week doing one or the other. It could be me every week. It could be one each, one each. So. We'll pull out a name of a hat and then we'll pull out whether to do a tweet back or a phone call. And so every every week it will be back because we're making Boytown great again. You know, we're reaching for the stars with some new merch coming out, which we're getting designed. And we're just ready to hit the studio with a brand new fucking wave, you know? Yeah, one thing we, uh, before we move on, because there's a couple of things that we'll rattle through today. And if we don't get through them all, we'll roll one on the next week. Mm. Um, I want to plug the Patreon because the Patreon hasn't been good enough from our end. No. But we're making a commitment that this is probably what's going to happen on Patreon. Mm-hmm. You'll get four podcasts a month on our Patreon. Two will be extra bits from the podcast, which will be after we record. Um, we will just do like a, a almost like a mini podcast after, just exclusively for Patreon. Also, just on that note, I meant to say to you this earlier. So this is probably news to you because I haven't told you this today. After you left the meeting yesterday, Ben had the suggestion. He said he might just start recording while we're setting up, so he could record at the beginning. So while he's setting up the lights and stuff, we're just having our general chit chat and a coffee and a bit That'd of be really cool. bit of chat. So it might be instead of having after a podcast when we're all sleepy and tired, well. It'll be the start of the podcast. I think That'll that be fun pretty cool. We're, we're, yeah. we're getting little goblins before the podcast. We are getting goblins, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and then um, once a month, you will. So you get four podcasts a month. Hopefully, like this is our plan. Mm-hmm. You get the two like behind the scenes ones. And then I will do a Money Toads Lily Pad podcast. Mm-hmm. And Dave will do Papa Bear's Picnic. Yeah. Which will be a little solo Patreon exclusive. So patreon.com slash Boytown Podcast is mm-hmm. where it will be. And we're going to bring those in as soon as possible and start making that worth people's while. So anyone that's stuck yeah. with us on Patreon, mm-hmm. we, we appreciate it and we're going to start doing better. And we're also going to, uh, now on Patreon, you can get a wee discount on merch as well. So if you're a patron, you'll be able to get a wee bit of money off our new range of merchandise as well. So that'll be nice and sexy as well. You know, Speaking and also, of sexy. Yeah, go ahead. Go, I was gonna, no, no, no. I was going to, you, because you're, I'm going to change subject. So you go ahead. I was going to say that speaking of sexy on the Patreon as well, we may be getting another member of staff on board and that'll make things run a bit smoother and be very sexy, you know? So, yep, yep, yep. It'll be a good okay. time. Um, so, what I want to talk, I want to do like a, a fun little thing before we do listeners' questions. Yeah. Um, because here's the thing on Boytown, we, we plan out a couple of wee things to talk about today. We're like, yeah. oh, maybe get into this. 
but sometimes you just get giddy and you get silly and you talk about yeah. laughing and if you're at school and it makes a longer bit and I think that's what's fun but what else is fun Dave I think you'll really enjoy this is I have an article here from a history website called 10 things done completely out of spite oh, well, be- I mean listen let me just lie back because I have a lot of time for this okay um, you know what's going to be good when it hold on a minimizing the screen you know what's going to be good whenever the first whenever number 10 <laughs> is just titled the nuns who cut off their noses the nuns who cut off their nose the nuns right. <laughs> i think you said the nuns that cut off their noses I was gonna say. <laughs> epstein's mates are on yeah. about unable to smell um <laughs> no it says the uh, You've probably heard the old expression, he cut his nose off to spite his face yeah. and assumed that it was just a colourful metaphor. Unfortunately, this um, may have been inspired by an actual historical event. According to a 1904 book, in, 18, in 867, Viking oh, no. raiders led by sons of Ragnar Lothbrok sailed southward and invaded Britain. As they ravaged the country, they gained a fearsome reputation for extreme cruelty. But when they attacked a monastery in Scotland, the female head of the institution assembled the nuns and exhorted them to avoid being raped by voluntarily disfiguring themselves. Oh, no. As an example, the main, the main nun is said to have cut off her own nose and upper lip. The rest of the sisters did the same. When the Vikings finally broke into the convent, their lust turned to disgust when they saw <laughs> the self-mutilated nuns. But I'm f- oh, do you know what's so sly, right? <laughs> this bit of it. Unfortunately, that act of defiance didn't prompt the raiders to spare their lives. Instead, they simply set fire to the place and burned them to death. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. I mean, that effort <laughs> deserves... Like, see, if I was leading, leading the Vikings, I'd say, listen, lads, I you mean, know, you, I what you've say, done there, it's excessive. You know, um, we're going to spare you, but not these Vikings. They're like, nah, let's book and burn the place down. I'll teach them. I would say the, the Vikings come across as complete bastards, and uh, yeah. I wish uh, I wish history was different, and I wish the nuns had I just come together and fucking <laughs> sack yeah. the Vikings. That would have been a lot of fun if the Vikings had to just sail back to mean, Scandinavia, I, being like these nuns are fucking terrifying. But what did what did you actually say that the the Vikings were doing? Did you say they were just going about just raping? Like that was what the point of their no, 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 no. It was like, well, they were like famous for like pillaging, which included like rape, murder. Yeah, you know, theft, you know what basically. I'm going to say? They essentially just went through England. and. I, I'm going to say, it's, that's sly. You know, I'm going to say that is sly from the Vikings. And I wish that it just left the nuns alone, especially after they had gone to the length that they went to try and get left alone and they still got mugged off. It's not fair. I don't like that from the Vikings. I don't like that at all. Um, and but I, I do like to, to know that the, the origin of that saying. You know, you know, I love a lot of things, but nothing I love more than the origin of a saying. Yeah, I mean, it's. I feel like it's one I probably will never explain to anyone who ever asks. Do yeah. I know the origin? The origin of that phrase? I just go, yeah. nope, because that story is yeah. fucking horrendous. horrific. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, that is absolutely grim and horrible. Um, number nine. Hopefully, this isn't as bad. Uh, Henry Clay Frick's classic rebuff to Andrew Car- uh, Carnegie. In, uh-huh. in the late 18, 1800s, which feels like a really spiteful time, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, age, Gilded Age moguls Andrew Carnegie and Henry Clay Frick teamed up to make massive fortunes in the steel industry, mm-hmm. Wonga, but their relationship eventually soured. And Carnegie muscled his partner out of business. Uh-huh. Even after winning a lawsuit against Carnegie and receiving compensation, Frick wasn't satisfied. This is so me. He yeah. spent the remainder of his life coming up with ways to get back at Carnegie. If we ever <laughs> stop doing this podcast, this is yeah. me. <laughs> after Carnegie built a mansion in New York, for example, Frick built a bigger, grander one nearby to upstage him. <laughs> Finally, in 1919, when the elderly Carnegie was in ill health, he dispatched his longtime personal secretary, James Bridge, who sounds like a fucking bitch, yeah. to visit Frick, who was similarly elderly and frail, and deliver a consolatory letter in which he asked for a meeting where the two old men could patch up their differences before they died. After reading the letter, Frick responded in a fashion that had gone down in history as one of the coldest insults of all time. He said, yes, you can tell Carnegie I'll meet him. Frick said the bridge, crumpling the letter in a ball and throwing it at him. <laughs> Tell him I'll see him in hell where we're both going. 
<laughs> I enjoy Frick. That's great. <laughs> I mean, he was so frail, but he still <laughs> used the rest of his strength to crumple it up and up. Uh, says, I would see him in hell, Carnegie. <laughs> That's where we're both going. <laughs> That's a bit more lighthearted. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, number eight, Saddam Hussein used a hotel floor to insult George Bush. Uh, when the later Iraq dictator Saddam Hussein held a grudge, he sometimes uses absolute power to take it to ridiculous extremes. Uh-huh. Hey, go to go him away and say, fucking horrendous man. After his defeat by the US and its allies in the first Gulf War in ni- 1981, I nearly said in 1991. <laughs> for example, Saddam's humiliation festered into a personal hatred for U.S. President George Bush. Huh. One of the is, this, Saddam, is this Bush Jr. or Bush Sr.? Just the this is Sr. I think because it was 2002. One of the ways that Saddam chose to express his rage was to have a huge mosaic floor laid in the entrance of Baghdad's five-star Al Rashid Hotel, <laughs> with the tiles arranged to form a portrait of Bush. The idea was that people entering the hotel be forced to tread upon Bush's face. In a Middle East culture, where striking someone with the sole of your shoes is a sign of disapproval. It was, it was supposed to be a conspicuous confront. But Saddam's gesture didn't stop Bush from leading a U.S. coalition that invaded Iraq and oh, no. overthrew Saddam's regime in 2003. Oh, the hotel, no. U.S. soldiers went into the hotel with hammers and chisels, dug out the mosaic of the former president, uh, and in its place, they laid a portrait of Saddam himself. Oh, no. Oh, sh- what a clapback from the boys. But what I don't get is, hell? like, why Why are the soldiers, why are the Marines artists? You know? <laughs> yeah, we chisel. Yeah, <laughs> like little, little Vinci. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I mean, I understand it because, you know, Americans fucking, you know, they love all the freedom and all that shit. So I get that they would, like, take out the one of Bush. Yeah. But it's the fact that they <laughs> <laughs> just, like, Commissioned a Saddam music. <laughs> Let's get in here and fucking validate our president. Hold on. Here's something I made earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Buchanan, Sergeant Buchanan. Uh, I don't know if I'll have time for all these, right? But I'll maybe do two more and then we'll do listeners' yeah. questions. And so we can great. save this for another time yeah. because it's fun. <laughs> John Lennon's musical taunt of Paul McCartney. As members of the Beatles, John Lennon and Paul McCartney formed the greatest songwriting team in history of pop music. Mm. But after the group's members began to bicker, McCartney left the group and filed a lawsuit to make the dissolution official. The former collaborators had once been so much in sync, they would go back and forth for hours, feeding off one another's lyrical brainstorms. But after the breakup, McCartney's insistence that he enjoyed working solo because I only had me to ask for a decision, Eric Lennon. So that's already bitchy. Meow. In 1971, Lennon responded with a song called How Do You Sleep, which was a scathing attack on his fellow ex beatle It contains lines such as, those freaks, those freaks were right when they said you were dead, a taunting reference to conspiracy theories that Paula died in a car accident oh, and had been replaced by a double. And the only thing you'd done was yesterday, a put-down of Beatles head associated with McCartney. Another lyric is, the sound you make is music to my ears, likened McCartney's solo work to the, to the can music played in elevators. Whoa, a little bitter, John? Question mark. Well, Fortunately, the two mates patched up their differences in 1972. In a TV interview, Lennon said, if I can fight with my best friend, if I can't fight with my best friend, I don't know who I can fight with, uh, which is a very nice quote at the end. But yeah, yeah. he shouldn't have written the song. But song you, also, that, you but. also know, kind of like, like us in many respects, um, John, our Paul McCartney, is just so fed up with John Lennon now. Now that he's dead, he's like probably sad when he died, but now he's like, oh, fucking stop talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> you give me some credit. Like I saw an interview with McCartney, just literally, someone's like, oh, do you want to talk about, like, what about John Lennon? And he's like, oh. Can I, can I be honest just for a yeah. second? I'm still fucking traumatized by that story about the nuns. That's maybe yeah. the worst story I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, because can you imagine how sore and just stressful that would be doing that. And then the Vikings are like, hell. burn the place. You're like, I, I can't make a face of having no nose in the mouth. But yeah, yeah that's sweet. Um, you are like, you're taking, don't, don't it stop for a minute and, you know, just you take a bit of breath and maybe try and feel no, a bit good. better. I'm good. Partner, you want to take a minute? No, no, I'm good. I just thought I was a bit worried about you there. No, no, don't, I'm all good. Don't mean to get I'm it up get, on, on the internet. Genuinely, that, is, that, has, that has haunted me. Yes, you yeah, get the question. It's not sweet. Um, right, okay. I'll get Instagram. You get Tweetor. Yep. 
Twitter, Twitter, show me your shit. That's the... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Twitter, on the first... Twitter, pint of bitter, pitter. I don't know. <laughs> Matthew Mernon has said, good morning, gorilla in the mist and the Nissan cash guy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nice. nice. We, we deep in barbecue season. So what are your favorite meats for grilling? Top three flavors. Um, I love I love to cook like uh, oh tuna tuna steak one hundred percent nice tuna steak sear it on the outside leave it leave it pretty raw in the middle let it sit for a couple of minutes tuna steak is my number one. And how do you t- how do you check if the tuna steak is cooked? Dare I ask? With my tongue. What about the present I got you? Did you have you used that for any meats yet? My was it like a Cooker McCrones book? Nope, it was a thermometer to check whether Uh-oh. meats are cooked, so you won't have to stick your tongue in it anymore. I haven't yet, but I would say that's going to come in handy oh, at some sp- point. Speaking of presents, I got you. Have you watched your Shane Lynch lifestyle DVD yet? Believe it or not, man, I feel like I'm enjoying life at the minute, so I'll maybe yeah. wait until like I just I need a little bit of a boost and right, then okay. I'm going to stick them on. Right, okay, that's fair. Rory okay. Miller said, Good evening which is Nunai Emery voice. Boyos, your boy has finally been able to get a snip for the first time in four months. Haircut, not circumcision. Although the Turkish barber did offer to throw that in as part of the deal. I was rocking the Ian Walker (laughs) curtain style for a while, and I see the NBC isn't far off that himself. What I'd like to know is if you guys looked um, at anyone over the years and thought, his hair looks class, I can pull that look off, but failed massively. I had a David Beckham style mohawk for an entire summer, but they get, had to get rid of it the first week of school because the abuse was too much. Stay sweet. I think I always aspired to have cool hair like someone like David Beckham or like the big uh-huh. celebrity of the time. But I just don't think I ever David got Guest. there. And t- David, more David Guest than David Beckham, yeah. <laughs> and if I had to pick somebody whose hair back in the day, I was like, oh, class. I just remember... There was this guy I used to hang about with back in the day, and his older brother was called Aaron, and he had the, the best curtains. But I just, I always thought my attitude was curtains probably took too much maintenance back in the day. Yeah. So I never went near them. Do you also remember, like, wasn't it when we sort of first became friends, like about 2012, you used to really like your man uh, off a of TV, Fran Crosgrove, and used to say, like, oh, I want to have <laughs> my haircut true. like Fran Crosgrove. And it was like, shaved at the front here and was kind of like you know in the in the sort of a mohawk but like spiky in the middle but shaved at the front and i said yeah it looks it would look really weird in you because your ears are too big and stuff but you, you still yeah. tried it and then you had to just get your head shaved and it was just really embarrassing you were I mean, big into that as a style i got you like joe pasquale didn't you yeah i mean i just liked him for his fashion sense rather than his hair but i mean he's a, he's a, the most underrated fashionista i think in the uk Joe Pasquale, like, what I would say to, to anyone that's, that doesn't know Joe, just Google him and check out his, his threads because they are fucking hot shit. Uh, Conor McCabry has said, hello to all you cute cats and kittens. What is the most exotic animal you would want to have as a pet? Um, none. I, I, don't, I don't like pets. Maybe a taxidermy thing, but mm. no, I, don't, I, don't, I Me, don't really like... If we're talking exotic, I would like to have a person... A what? A person. I want a human as a pet. But why did you say a person with no R? Because What's I your R? Look, my R is saved because it's not a... So I like a little... You, I like a do little, you want to borrow an R from me? You throw it my way. <laughs> oh, I like a person, please. But I would like it to be like some sort of like lesser discovered like forest kind of person so like i don't know are those are, 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 are pixies real things yeah they're a band yeah i like the pixie forest people as a, as a pet which is would the worst you, I would, alternative to I would, village people i would like you to play a character who says person like person a cat just, like he was in movie cats it would, i can't purr on no um, yeah, yeah. It's our boy, the dull cast man himself, Daniel Houston. He said, seeing as Shane yep. wasn't best pleased with my question on the last tea with me, I turned to Dave to ask what he thinks of Shane's sleeveless hoodie. A bold statement, or should the fashion police be knocking on his door? I mean, 
you know me, I'm a, what a lot of people would describe as a bodybuilder and, and sleeve, like short sleeve, sleeveless hoodies are big in the bodybuilder community, along with leggings and bum bags. So, I mean, I feel like you should definitely wear that again with leggings and a bum bag, but yeah, it's, it's good look. And I think you should definitely take human growth hormone and just make yourself get really big, like your organs and your skull Bigger. and stuff. Just, yeah, just get yeah. really big. I think it'd be a real cool idea. Uh, speaking of getting big, uh, totally unrelated to this, but have you seen, by the way, the fashion police will never arrest you for having a go at trying to get something right. And maybe if everyone experimented a little bit more fashion, we wouldn't all look the same, which Daniel and Dave do. Um, Dave, have you seen The Rock's new show on Netflix, The Titan Games? Uh, yeah, I haven't watched it, but I know of it. It's pretty gnarly. Next question. Uh, Richard McClay, Dick Clay, said Bondi as she goes. Did you know... The famously masked wrestler and now politician Kane was the only member of his local council to vote against wearing masks in public, FS. But any tips on how to make a mask look creme fresh? Um, yeah, you could do a number of things. Like you could do Diamante, like diamonds, which would look pretty hot. Yeah. Or you could just straight up like, what about just a wee slit where the tongue is and just poke your tongue through? Yeah, I mean, I think would defeat the purpose. What I think would be a good look would be... No, it's a if, fake tongue you put through. All right, okay, well, and that'd be, that'd be really great. I, I would like to see, you know, the Hannibal Lecter mask? And he's yes. like, um, I'd like to have that, but obviously it'd need to be perspex piece of plastic so you couldn't actually... So then people would think it's Hannibal Lecter, but then really it wasn't. Or a Bo Selector mask, because he's not doing that anymore because he got uh, had to apologize and said it was racist. So I just take the Craig David Bo Selector mask and that would do me. What about just a really cute guy's hand as a mask? Yeah, I mean, I mean, attached to his body, or would you? Either or. <laughs> I would like to get a mask of, you know, Jimin from BTS, and just so I could just look like a Jim fat Moore? version of Jimin, not Jimon. Jim I mean, I'd, 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 I'd wear a Jimon mask as well, for sure. <laughs> I just like the idea of Jimon being in BTS. I mean, it would definitely add something to the band, a wee bit of experience, a wee bit of salt and pepper with the sideburns there. It'd be, it'd be sexy. <laughs> um, let me see. There's so many questions here. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Chris Caffin has said, good morning, boy George and Sir Elton. We all love the segment of Bond's thoughts, but maybe to keep up with times, I thought you could trial a new nonce thoughts <laughs> you could talk about the latest celebrity cheeky fiddler and maybe um even dare i ask make predictions i'd happily stick a quid on a way accumulator prediction on hermanos themselves much love boys stay safe um yeah i mean i feel like there are a, a lot of podcasts and that is their theme is like yeah. getting to the bottom of all that kind of stuff um yeah. in terms of predictions i don't think I, I think even if you said somebody as a joke, thinking it definitely wouldn't be them, then the next mm-hmm. day in the news would be like, no, it definitely is them. Like my uh, wife made a statement about, you know, the lead singer of Kasabian. He just like, oh. he left Kasabian via mutual consent yesterday. She yep. goes to me. By the way, why, why uh, do they say like, why did they release that statement saying he's left by mutual consent as if like he's just had his contract terminated at the Crystal Palace? Yeah, well, well, he, he did that, and then they were like, um, she goes to me, yeah, I think he has probably done something, something's going to come out about him, and I was like, Catherine, can people not just <laughs> leave <laughs> by mutual consent? No, she was like, she goes, it did say in the statement from Kazabian, he was dealing with some personal behavioral problems, you know, so that was kind of, mm. but then uh, whenever the news came out today, he's yeah, been tried for assault did you see that uh Iana's like his girlfriend or his partner um, and yeah. did you see that Noel Gallagher was talking about Tom and said from Kasabian and said that uh they used to have this mental thing where if and Noel Gallagher was saying this like it was 100 percent true he's mm-hmm. like if Kasabian were like partying and Tom's like Tom got out of control the yeah. band's manager used to arrange for him to be taken to the nearest Toys R Us because whenever he played with toys he calmed down is that a real thing? Like, is that? Yeah. Or did you just make that up? Toys R Us. I swear, it'd be so weird if I made that up. I swear. Um, but if I mean, I, I would, I would believe it. Very. If I can get, the, if I can get the um, article sent to you right now, I'll, I'll read it out. Here we go. No. No Gallagher. 
uh, tall, right? So this is like, yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh -huh. This is a, a, apparently like, you know, things can be fake news, but it doesn't seem like it's trying to be mad. Yeah. I don't know. Here we go. This is what Noel said, talking about Tom. He is mental. And when he gets too mad, they have to take him to a toy shop to calm him down. I don't know whether I'm supposed to say that. He can hold 20 conversations at the same time. He was in our dressing room one afternoon. He's drinking a pint of vodka and Red Bull. This is before the soundtrack. And then literally one sentence, he's going, have you got any fucking Red Bull? Look at that lighter. Fucking hell, four for a pound. You smoke more blue lights, birds, fags. And apparently whenever he gets like that he, he, and he's too mad, they have to take him to Toys R Us. The last time I actually laid eyes on him, he was in our hotel. He was in Liam's room, but management was shitting themselves. Someone turned up, put him in a cab, took him to Toys R Us in Times Square to calm him down. Because all the flashing lights he plays with on the toys make them all right. That's fucking genius, man. I mean, oh, definitely a weird tactic. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, fair play to the guy if he's he's going through a few things. It seems. Um, but yeah, I enjoy Casabian, so hopefully, you know, they get in. Uh, so Adam Lambert will be a good lead singer. Is what I'm saying. You know, he'll fit yeah. in well, Casabian. So um, that it turns out that was all the questions on Instagram. So do you have a couple of Twitter ones, and then we'll be. Yeah, there was, there was talk that you were there was talk that you were going to join because you've been on a free transfer or or a loan deal. Is that any I truth? Mean, in that? I could do it. I could I could sing for Casabian, but I mean, because they want a big man up front. Yeah, but but I think that the podcast needs me more. You know, Boy Town needs a bit more than Casabian. Okay. I think. Craig Johnson says, "Hi, legends of shit talk. <laughs> <laughs> Great work on keeping our lid over lockdown. Hardest working comedians in Northern Ireland." What's your take on official football crowd, artificial football crowd noises? How funny is it when they make a complete bollocks of it? Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Appreciate that you enjoyed yes. it, Craig. And, and I can't deny that we are legends of shit talk, yeah. if, if legends at all. Um, yes, I, I, I was totally against when I saw some of the Bundesliga stuff. Uh -huh. the, 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 uh, no, it's actually it's the Bundesliga. It's the Bundesliga. Um, I, was, I thought it was weird, but actually in the last few Premier League games I've watched, like a couple of United games, a match of the day, it, I forget that there isn't a crowd. I think the yeah. crowd noises are better because it seemed like at the start, Dave, they were just letting someone like me or you do the crowd noises yeah. that Craig sent in that because some like, somebody would miss a sitter and it was like, yes! And then it would go, yeah. ooh, you know, yeah. like really quickly. So I actually think that's kind of fun as yeah. well. But um, but the football been back has been kind of great, although... My plan was like, I'm going to watch every match and watch all the highlights. And now I'm just sort of watching a bit here and there. Yeah. But I'm enjoying Like during this idea. podcast, just found out Arsenal have conceded like a last minute equaliser to Leicester there. So I'm really sad. You know, it's like, it's like, fuck sake. Classic fuck Arsenal. Sake. Phil says, evening, you sexy sultans of Summersby. Independence Day was a few days ago, and Big Chief Tiny Hands gave a speech in front of Mount Rushmore. I don't even Oh, Trump. My Trumper. question is, if I had a stone stone monument to four important and iconic heads, who would they be? Cultural icons, not political, as if we're going to pick politicians. Phil, great question. Mm -hmm. It would be me, Dave, and then two more. What about, like, uh, I like to think it would be a, a good representation of me and you, and then beside us, it's me and you again, but we've got to yeah. design the other persons. Yeah, so that would be perfect. That would be... <laughs> it would be, like, be like a caricature. Yeah, you yours would look, look very like, like the BFG. BFG. Yeah, yours would be, would be interesting. And also... The gap in between your front two teeth, would be, you'd be able to drive through that. Yeah, like if we took the food the that's always stuck between the front two teeth of, that you have and put them in my gap, it would just be plugged perfectly. So it would work well. You know, it would be grand. Um, I've bugged you off there. Yeah, I know, but you don't have too much of an HD camera, so you wouldn't be able to tell. Any more questions on Twitter? Is that us? Hey, man. First of all, no, we've got like two more, and we'll get through them. But what I don't want you to do is slag off my camera, because oh, no. I hate it when you do that shit. <laughs> I mean... What do you oh, think no. of this? <laughs> I think it's weird. I think it's weird that now, finally, the whole background's gone. <laughs> rather than just yeah, being... because we were doing a Zoom before this for the radio show, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't doing this, and I haven't moved, and I'm no. in the same room. Yeah, and it's all good. Um, yeah, I would worry about you. I'd go see your doctor because that's a weird look. Like, it definitely is. Okay. Um, <laughs> Reba says, Bon dia, cheeky boys. Since the Shaney Boy cute, cute birthday tea pod where he got to see producer Dan's gorgeous, well, we got to see producer Dan's gorgeous face. I'm worried how safe his job is. Now the world knows his beauty eclipses yours. So my question is exactly mm. how threatening both by Dan. That's a good question. We're just off a of Zoom by Dan and he was throwing yeah. shade at kind of both of us. Yeah, he was being a little mouthy pig. 
And you know what happens to the little mouthy pigs? They get spit roasted and eaten. So he needs to just watch it. <laughs> but yeah, I would say, how dare you ask us a question and call somebody cuter than us? Because we are the only two people in this country that have bespoke mirrors. That they're the only two every day go mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? And then it always says it's the other one. And it fucking puts us in bad moods when the day starts. I think it says a lot about Dan that he fits seamlessly into the sort of programs and stuff yeah. that we make. You know, that yeah. says a lot about the guy that he actually just fits in and gets yeah. on like very normal. So, um, but yeah, his hair is looking pretty sharp at the minute. Yeah. And, uh, he's got that surfer hair, surfs up. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, George Aaron, I think, says... Was surprised to see Papa Bear, uh, George says, was surprised to see Papa Bear and the money totem and paparazzi out in Soho over the weekend. What did you think of the crowds out having a, a, in the post pint world, Dave? He's done us a kipper here because what is this, it? Let this, me see. It's, us. it's two guys in Soho. <laughs> and I'll be honest, <laughs> like, I don't remember getting this flight, but we must have. <laughs> 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 yeah, the boys have a good time. So, I mean, you're locked yeah. on haircuts, definitely sweet. <laughs> Here, how much, how much fun would you and I have, like right now? And so, who on a on a session, like? Listen, all I would say is there wouldn't be a one meter distance if the boys were in Soho. There'd be lots of cuddles, <laughs> there'd be hugs, there'd be a lot of like high fives. It'd just be a good time if the guys were in Soho for sure. It'd be a good time with good guys, and that's what we're all about. And Absolutely. that about wraps up the BTP, the Boy Town Podcast. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Plug That's all better. the socials there, Shane. Plug them. We'll get wrapped. So we're on Instagram. We're, we're pretty much like getting rid of the Facebook. We're just going to focus on the Instagram and the YouTube yeah. channel. So YouTube is Boytown Podcast and um, Facebook, or Instagram is the same. I think. Boy yeah. And also our Patreon, Boytown Podcast. Lots of new hot shit coming out there. I'll tell you what it's going to be. Would you, Shane, shit. would it be fair to say that Patreon is going to be very Cunanan going forward? Say, so Cunan and very ACB. So Cunan and Cunan. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. Uh, yeah, so let's have it. Do you know what, Davey? Mm-hmm. Because we've been like not on it with the Patreon, now we are. As punishment, we're not plugging mm-hmm. our own socials or our own podcast yeah, right now. Absolutely not. We're bad boys. But guys, boy town, let's make it great again. Slap your wrist. Share the podcast. We haven't seen one fucking story of boy town, and I'm going to smack your bottoms and chain lead them. So you may share. Can, I just, can I just finish by saying. Um, I really, really hope that when those Vikings were going back to Scandinavia, that they fucking mm. drowned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I hope, like, I hope other nuns find them. Uh, they're, basically, what I really hope is the, the Vikings, like, their ship ran ashore when they were trying to flee England, mm-hmm. and they tried to get back to shore to England, and when they got there, there was other nuns who had heard about what happened, yeah. and the Vikings are like, oh, please just give us a hand to get out of the water, because they're nearly dead at this point, and the nun went, I'll give you a hand, and she just grabbed them, and then dragged them under, and then that was it, and the nuns yeah. got the revenge, because I want to go to bed thinking that. But you know what I would have liked to happen to you? I would like them to fall in the sea. And then they'd be like, oh, no, we are drowning. But then they see these, like, look, like friendly-looking fishies. And then it turns out that the fishies are actually nose nonchers. And they just nonch down in their nose and their top lip. And then they lose their nose and then drown in the sea. Those Vikings. Yep. Yeah, yep. I think Sweet it's a nice, a nice note to leave it on. Bye, guys. <laughs>